everyone to another episode of From the Sands, the Cool Picks show. On today's episode, we have former NHL goaltender Eddie Lack on the show to join us. Uh, during the show, we will talk about his NHL career, what it was like to play out in Sweden and come to North America and play in the National Hockey League, his experiences between four different teams, um, and so much more. So without further ado, let's get Eddie on the show and get things started. All right, Eddie Lack, how are you, sir? Hey, good. How are you? Good, man. Thanks for taking the time to chat with us today. For sure. For sure. Thank you for having me. So I know you got a hectic and a slam schedule, so we'll get things rolling. So where did the passion for hockey come from? Uh, so when Sweden won the Olympics in 94, uh, I was just six years old and I watched on uh, TV or I listened on like the radio. I can't really ima- uh, remember uh, exactly how, but, but uh, yeah, when they won, I basically just uh, told my dad uh, that this is something that I want to do and this is something that I want to try. So yeah, I, I, I tried it and I loved it. That's incredible. Now you started your hockey career, obviously in Sweden, playing for Lexans and Brynäs before moving to the National Hockey League. How much work and preparation was there for you to put in before transferring to the National Hockey League? Uh, I honestly felt that playing over here was e- easier for me with like the smaller ranks and everything. Like I, I, I've never been a the best skating goalie uh, so like the big ice and everything they have more room they have more space and everything that didn't suit me as well as uh, like the NHL size rings and everything so I I felt pretty comfortable from, from like the start it was more like some like getting used to the angles and like the, the trapezoid too obviously <laughs> Yeah, definitely. It's definitely a, a different experience that you certainly have to get used to. But you ended up getting used to it uh, in 2010 because after going undrafted in 2009, you signed as a free agent in 2010 with the Vancouver Canucks. What was that mentality like for you, uh, not having your name called out during the actual draft, but being able to sign with the team a year later? Yeah, like for me, the draft and everything wasn't really a big deal. Like, I, 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 knew that goalies de- develop later and everything and I knew that if I just put the, uh, my work down with Lex and Brinas that I was going to get the chance like eventually. I, I uh, kind of uh, expected that it was going to take like a, maybe like a year or two more than it actually did before I signed but I guess they, they uh, saw something in me uh, that the, the other teams th- th- didn't so. Hey, and that's a good thing because in 2010, during the 2010-2011 season, uh, when you were playing with the Canucks AHL team, uh, the Manitoba Moose at the time, you were named to the AHL's all-rookie team. What was it like being named to that squad and starting to make a name for yourself uh, in pro hockey there? Cool, cool. I mean, when I first came over, I, I think a lot of people expected me to almost start in the East Coast and, and, and to uh, be able to come in and like have the camp that I did with Vancouver first. I, 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 I think I like uh, turned some heads there and, 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 and uh, people kind of like started to believe a little bit that I could play at that level. And, 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 and yeah, uh, just to cut to uh, come in and have like a really good season with 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 the uh, uh, Manitoba that was so much fun and like we had a great great team and like for uh, an an AHL team we had like a ton of fans we had a lot of like media around the team and stuff too so that was uh, really fun uh, getting used to as well now one thing that's unique about hockey players whether you're a skater, like a forward, a defenseman, a goalie, etc., you get nicknames. And your nickname in the league was the Stork. Now, how did, how and where did the Stork come from? How did that nickname get started? 
So I think it started in like Lex and Urbinus, I think. It was just like my my uh, long legs and, and, and I mean, uh, I was very thin back then. I didn't have a lot of muscle. So, I mean, <laughs> I, I guess that's where it originated from, right? <laughs> Gotcha. Just, just able to block the whole net by by the wingspan, eh? That's it. Now, um, <laughs> yeah, it must have been something like that. Now, on October 6, twenty thirteen, you made your first appearance uh, between the pipes for the Canucks, where you earned your first NHL win. Uh, the game ended up going into overtime, but Mike Santorelli uh, ended up scoring the overtime winner to secure your win. What was your mind going through when you kind of heard the buzzer, saw the red light at the other end of the ring, and you knew you won your first NHL game? It was so cool. It was just like a relief, right? Just like when I I uh, remember like the first and the se- second period, I was playing pretty good, but uh, they got a few quick ones to start like – the third and then they tied it with like a minute to go in the third and I was just like like to uh, be able to come back and get the win and everything like that was so cool like I remember uh, before the game and everything back then we used to wear heart, heart rate monitors and everything before the game and uh, my strength coach, Roger Takahashi, said that uh, during the national anthem and everything, my heart rate was like 180, 185, right? So I was just like ner- ner- nervous before the game, but like just, just so, so so happy to get the win. Yeah, and that's really good too because it's always – those first wins are always so instrumental in your career. Um, and talking about firsts of kind of things, um, I do want to mention a little bit about the feeling around getting your first uh, shutout in the NHL, but also having that being on home ice. Yeah, so uh, that was uh, funny. It was against Carolina Hurricanes, right, where I ended up getting tra- traded to. And uh, I remember Roly Melanson, my goalie coach, he – uh, came up to me before the game and everything, and and he was like, "Just enjoy it. Like you're always gonna remember your first home game and everything. And like being my first home game and like getting my first shout out, like yeah, that was 100 percent like very special for me." Now talking about Carolina and being traded uh, to them during your NHL career, you actually ended up playing for four different teams. Vancouver, where you started, then Carolina, Calgary, and finally New Jersey. Out of those four teams, which would you have to say was probably your favorite uh, city or team to play for? So I, so I think my favorite was uh, Vancouver. Like that's where I came up through their system. Like I, I uh, love Vancouver as a city. Like uh, that, that, that that's kind of where I played my best ho- hockey too. So I, I uh, definitely enjoyed Vancouver the most. Now throughout your career also, uh, every team, every time your team won, you did what was du- now dubbed the lock dance. How did the <laughs> tradition of the lock dance get started? <laughs> I have no idea. Like I, I think just, Looking back at it, there was like one game where I was like super happy, and I just like like it it kept me and everything. And like I I don't even remember like exactly how it started, but 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 yeah, that was kind of like a fun thing that I could do, like. with the fans and like the younger fans and everything they loved it too right so yeah it was just like a fun 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 thing to do hey you never know soon the younger generation you might see that lock dance come back into play a little bit (laughs) we'll see we'll see now during your career you played over 140 games with those four teams 
is there one game that stands out in your mind that was the most memorable or toughest game in your career? Yeah, I I think when we clinched the playoffs with Vancouver, so uh, we were in like a battle with LA for that last spot and everything, like, and it was really tight with just like a few games left, and we played them at home, uh, like. I think the third last game and we won two one in a shootout to like clinch like the playoffs and everything and like that was just like so cool the atmosphere was uh, great at Rogers Arena and 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 yeah ju- ju- just like that's probably like the game uh, that I got best memories from I think now, talking about those memories as well, out of all of the stadiums that you were able to compete in and travel to, which stadium was your favorite to play in? Chicago. Like, uh, since Vancouver's farm team was there and I played there for two years, I always, like, en- ended up going to, like, the United Center to watch NHL games and everything. Like, uh, my wife is from there. So, so I o- always had, like, a friends and family that would come and watch the games and everything. So, yeah, I, I, I uh, loved playing at the uh, United Center. They always had, like, a like, uh, great team. It, it was, like, a rivalry game too, right? So, yeah, that's, that's for sure my, my, my favorite drink to play in. Now, a lot of people in their lives have individuals that were big mentors for them, either growing up in their sport or off the uh, – ice in your case kind of pushing them to succeed was there someone in your life that helped you helped guide you and was a big mentor for you yeah I mean my dad has always been been there for me he's always driven me to practices he was my coach up until I was 16 I think and and yeah just just uh, he is the most influential person that I've had so far in my life I think and and and, and yeah just uh, teaching me about life in general like goalie wise I I uh, I've loved watching Henrik Lundqvist play like uh, he came up when I was like 12 or 13 years old back home in Sweden and like he he was just like such a great goalie to watch and learn from so yeah those now, are the two now off the ice you like i just want to talk about off the ice for a minute um yeah. you decided actually sorry let me get i'll refrain back for a sec so earlier this year in march you actually announced your retirement from the nhl what was the mentality like for you knowing that you're stepping away for the game but on your terms you see a lot of times where athletes may have to back away because of injury or something like that or, or a bad taste in their mouth. What was it like for you uh, with your retirement? Yeah, no, it, that was an easy decision for me to make. Like, I, I've been battling these hip issues and stuff for so long. And I ba- basically uh, just told myself before my last surgery that uh, if I'm not 100%, I'm not going to force it again. And, like, it's not fair to me or fair to whatever team that would sign me, right? So I, I, I uh, just wanted to make sure that I could live a normal life after hockey, and 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 yeah, I'm I'm uh, happy to say that that I'm I'm like pretty close to a normal life now. And that's uh, great. And maybe, hey, maybe it was pulling one too many uh, the lock dances after a win for those. <laughs> maybe, yeah. <laughs> you might be right. Um, now, talking about that normal life after hockey, uh, you now are a real estate agent in Arizona. What made you want to get into the real estate game um, and make that as a career? So I've always been interested in it. Like, that's a... Uh, uh, part of what my family does back home in Sweden we have hotels and like uh, real estate investments and everything back home so I kind of wanted to do uh, my own thing with that and and like just just to challenge myself like I I 
think that I could have done something with hockey or being a coach. Like I'm, I'm a, a coaching ASU down here too. But that, 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 that's basically just something for me to uh, stay within the game. Like I, I wanted to do something completely new to challenge myself, and and and, and yeah, just start something new. Well, hey, there you go, guys. If anyone's watching that lives in Arizona, hit Eddie up for a room, for a house, and he'll he'll get you a right <laughs> you need. Um, I appreciate it. Now, one last question I have for you is: if there's anyone that is watching that is wanting to get into hockey, kind of start off their sport career, anything like that, or even just getting into sports from a coaching perspective, what kind of words of wisdom or advice would you want to share with those uh, the younger generation? I would just say that, that like, whatever you want to do, if it's hockey, if it's sport, if it's something else, just follow your passion. Like, like uh, when you're excited about something and, like, you have a passion about something, you're going to put, like, all your living energy into that thing, right? And, and, and uh, uh, I... I uh, that's what I tried to follow my entire career, right? Like, I feel like I'm one of those guys that had the most fun at the rink, and I truly enjoy going uh, to the ring. And I think that's what I was lacking a little bit at the end with my injuries and everything. And 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 and, and uh, that's why, like, I always say, just fo follow your passion, work hard, and and uh, th th things are gonna work out. The words of wisdom from the great Eddie Lack. Thank you so much, sir, for taking the time uh, to chat with us, to be on the show. Uh, we really thank you, it and uh, all the best in the future. Perfect. Have a great day. Thanks for thank having you. me. No problem. Thanks so much. Take care. <laughs> All right, everyone, that was Eddie Lack from the Vancouver Canucks NHL alumni. Uh, thank you to Eddie for joining us, and thank you all for tuning in on another episode of From the Stands. We appreciate it. Uh, we hope you all have a great day. Take care.